Hello everyone, this is Digitrax83, or Delta6, of the Run8 community, uh, and I have, this is a tutorial that is a year and a half overdue. This is the V2 Custom Sounds tutorial. I know you guys have been asking me about this forever, and I just really haven't gotten around to it, and there's absolutely no excuse for that. So let's jump in, uh, shall we? So you're going to need a f one particular thing. Many of you have XNA Game Studio 3.1 installed for making sounds for V1. That's not going to going to cut it anymore. You do still use XAct for V2, but we need a different version. So what you're going to do, and I already have it downloaded, but I will just simply show you, is you need the DirectX SDK from June 2010. This is the re you this is what V2 uses as the uh, redistributables for certain libraries in order to run. Um, it's what it's how V2 sound engine works. Um, so you're gonna go here, the DirectX software development kit. Again, there will be a link in the description. Obviously, you're just gonna hit download, and it's gonna be about a 500 megabyte file. Um, now we are gonna go to my documents, and we are going to where did I put it? We're going to downloads exe files. So what we're gonna do here is we have the file, we're just going to run this. There's a f possibly two things you may need to uninstall in order to get this to work. Now granted, DirectX, there are two Visual C libraries from 2010 that DirectX SDK will try to install. If you're, Windows 10 and pretty much every Windows since 7 already comes with those installed. So DirectX fails trying to do it. So you're going to have to uninstall those, and I'll show those two. I'm going to attempt to see if this is uh, the uh, version install of DirectX SDK. I have not actually tried it on this um, computer whatsoever, so I am not sure whether it will sh uh, work or fail. So you're going to put it right here, Program Files x86, not worry about it. You don't really need anything else here, but it's good to have just in case you ever want to do any uh, development. Let's see, samples and source code. Uh, now we'll keep those for now. So now that's going to install. And we're going to see quickly, I will skip ahead um, to see exactly uh, if it fails or not. All right, so here we go. We are back. Um, all right, here we go. We are back. So this is what happens if you don't install uninstall the two uh, Visual C redistributables that uh, the DirectX SDK tries to install. The setup will fail. So it's going to give you an error code S1023. So what do we need to do? What we need to do is we need to go to our control panel. And you do have to do this on any uh, operating system uh, newer than seven. You have to. It's it's not an option. Otherwise, you will never be able to do this. So we're going to go to two specific ones. These are the culprit culprits right here. Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 redistributables. There's an x64 and an x86 version for 64-bit and 32-bit. You need to uninstall both of these. The DirectX SDK will reinstall these. It's not like you're losing them forever. You're only losing them for about five minutes. Um, and once these are uninstalled, uh, the DirectX SDK will work as intended. And then you can simply follow the same steps that were from the V1 sound creation tutorial. See, they're now done. And uh, I'm going to speed up the video here, or cut it, until the setup is completed and is successful. So, until then... All right, so apparently something has been wrong with the way the hotkeys work. So this is the third time I have tried to record this. The last two times it didn't actually record due to keyboard issues communicating with OBS. So you can see the DirectX SDK from June to the... I'm just paranoid. I need to double check that uh, this is actually recording the file. Um, and it is. Good. Um, so it's finished. So uh, let's, uh, and I just want to show everyone in case anyone gets really paranoid, you did not lose the redistributables. So I'll refresh. You can see the DirectX uh, SDK right here. And the two 2010 files have been uh, reinstalled. 
thanks to the DirectX SDK. Now, um, I'm going to show you XACT. Um, so it's down here under Microsoft, it's under M. Microsoft DirectX SDK, June 2010. And if I'm, I apologize for speaking so fast. This is the third time I've tried to record this part of the video, so I'm a little frustrated. So here it is. Here's XACT. Um, and uh, it's the same XACT you know and love. Uh, the only difference is this one works for the DirectX SDK. There is a huge benefit to this one, however. To all of you who have been making very good custom sound projects with the original version of XACT for V1, you can import your original version 1 or 2009 XACT projects into this version and they will be updated to properly. Uh, and you can save them as their own version of the project. And that simply means you can take your V1 sound projects and rather than have to start them from scratch, run them through the new XACT and have them load into V2 with great ease without having to really change anything at all. Um, there's another thing I will show, uh, you may have seen it scrolling through, called the audio console. I've never explained this, but I should have. And that's on me. The audio console allows you to preview sounds and mess with the effects of them in real time uh, with XACT. So how do we connect to it? Addition and connect to, this is the name of the PC for me, so connect to Monica in this case. Um, and then it'll say it's now connected. Now if I were to click on a sound, if I had any waves in the wave bank, I could click on one, select play, and adjust many of these different settings, and it would come out through here. Um, this is a pretty, for those who really uh, want to try and crack the code on V2, uh, custom horn, standalone horns before me, um, this is a really helpful tool for you. Um, and we can close it with Q, and it will close, and uh, that's for XACT. Um, and there is one more thing, I just need to check, I'm recording again, I'm extremely paranoid right now. So we're going to go to the horns folder. Um, now... As I've explained the last two times, which no one has heard, uh, because of, um, some of you have been getting the reversed horn sound issue with your horns. Some of you have found, already found the workaround, but for those that haven't, what you need to do, and I'm not going to really show this, is I'll do a demonstration here. Uh, using a couple lines. Uh, this is really unprofessional, but I really could not care at the moment. You need to make your files, simply put, you need to start your sound project from scratch, or you just delete them all and then re-import them this way. For those who, for whatever particular horn you're trying to replace, if you have the reverse sound cues, rename your two files the wrong thing. Rename them the opposite of what they are. Then when the game plays them backwards, it'll actually play them in the correct order. Um, this is something that uh, I think most of you have already figured out, but certain horns just have reversed cues. I'll give a perfect example. Is the K5 HLO. This is our special snowflake for the day. Um, don't save. You can see this one has release attack. Here's how you can check what, which order the cues are in. And sometimes, again, this won't help you either. It'll Sometimes it's just trial and error. Let's go to the K3LA. Um, that has attack release. Uh, most of these all have attack release, but there's a few that don't. And then, obviously, I'll just show this off. Although, this should be a no-brainer to all of you. When you're making a bell file, that's the wrong one. When you're making a bell file, the only cue is literally just bell. Literally just bell. That, 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 that's, that's it. Um, I might do one on custom detectors. It's kind of a nightmare. Um, I can actually show off the kind of cues for those really quickly. It's not really per pertaining to this particular tutorial, but I am willing to show it off simply because. So let's go to the CSX detector. There's a, a comparison I want to make. So the CSX detectors only have 19 sound cues. Um... The BNSF detectors, because they have temperature and speed, um, have a total of 23 cues. Simply put, you can never, never try to put 
a CSX detector project to replace a BNSF or UP one. Your game will crash when it tries to get to one of those queues you haven't built yet. Um, so, for example, here's the BNSF detector one, and you can pause the video and look here. Uh, I have not figured out... I have not actually worked on making these detectors work in V2 again, so that tutorial is at negative 10% progress right now. Um, but uh, that is that is that is coming. I'm going to have to force myself to do it at some point, or otherwise I will go completely insane. Um, this is the thing we are bound by. This is the thing that's causing all the problems of why we... Until we crack this, we're still going to have to do the replacing of horns. Now, I'm willing to provide you guys with the information that John Greenstone had told me as personal tips on how to make, uh, how to get one step closer to these uh, custom standalone horns and sounds. Um, but uh, I'll send that at some point if people are interested. But otherwise, that's everything you need to know. So for making sounds from this point with x -Act, simply watch the last two videos, part one and part two, and go from there, um, and you should be right as rain. So without that, with uh, that out of the way, this has been Delta 6 of the Run 8 community uh, signing off. Have a good one.